Hi everyone, today I'm excited to be unboxing my launch day iPhone 11 Pro in silver. This is the first time I've had a silver iPhone since my silver iPhone 8 Plus, and I always thought that that iPhone looked more white than silver. I'm hoping that this will be the same with this iPhone 11 Pro. Let's get it unboxed and check it out. Opening this up, very exciting. Can't wait to see what the iPhone 11 Pro in silver actually looks like. And the answer is, to my eye, this looks way more white than silver, although we'll have to take a closer look. First off, let's look at the contents of the box. We got our sheaf of Apple regulatory information and general info, and then we have our lightning ear pods here. Not exactly exciting, but useful to have around. And then we have the very exciting 18 watt fast charger. This charges via USB-C, so we need a different type of cable. This is a lightning to USB-C cable. This is unquestionably a great addition to the Pro Series line. Unfortunately, the iPhone 11 only ships with the regular 5-watt charger that Apple has been using for years, but this 18-watt charger is going to be absolutely awesome for the Pro Series phones. It's going to make them charge much, much more quickly. As I noticed in my iPhone 11 unboxing earlier today, Apple has decided to change from having a plastic protective sheet on both sides of the iPhone to only on the screen. Not really quite sure why that would be, whether it's because the back glass is now so tough it doesn't need the extra protection or just because they're trying to be more eco-conscious. At any rate, just one sheet of plastic to peel off here. And if you're curious as to why I have this sticker here on the front, this is here because I purchased the phone at an Apple store in Shanghai and that's the way they come packaged. Initial impressions of the iPhone 11 Pro are that it has a very premium look and feel, much more premium than the iPhone 11, even though I love the iPhone 11. The stainless steel sides are so highly polished, they definitely give this a higher end look, and this is also a weightier phone, which makes it feel fancier as well. Not sure whether the weight is just because of the stainless steel versus aluminum sides on the iPhone 11, or because the camera is weighing more or something like that. But uh, overall, the impression that you have when you're holding it is that this is just a very premium product indeed. Everything just looks and feels beautifully made. So we have an extremely bright screen on here. This is even brighter than the screen on the iPhone 10s and 10s Max. You have more nits of brightness, whatever those are. Not really quite sure how that works. Other than that, in terms of the screen, it's very similar to what we saw on the 10s and 10s Max. The same size bezel, the same size notch. We do have an improved front camera on here, and this one is capable of doing the slow motion selfies or slow fees if you ever wanted to do that. I can't imagine that you would, but if you did, this will do that. You also have the ability to include more people in a selfie shot using your front facing camera. If you turn this to the side, you automatically get a wide angle shot, so that is a nice feature. Going to the back, we have a beautiful expanse of silvery white matte finished glass. This has a lovely feel underneath the fingertips, feels lovely and smooth. It's also going to be very good in terms of resisting fingerprints, much better than the glossy glass back that you have on the iPhone 11s, although I think overall this is perhaps a little slipperier in the hand, so you probably should use a case with this phone. So we have this matte glass, as I mentioned here, on the majority of the back, and then on the area around our camera bump, this is finished with a glossy glass. So it is a little bit different. It's actually the exact opposite of the arrangement that you have on your iPhone 11, where you have a glossy glass back and then a frosted or matte finished area for the camera bump. So I think that they just wanted to mix things up a little bit, have a different look for the two types of phones. So so speaking of your camera bump, a lot of people were worried this was going to look awful, but actually I think that Apple's done a great job with this. As you can see, our camera lenses protrude only very slightly from the back of the phone. This is much less than cameras that we had on the iPhone XS Max, iPhone XS, etc., XR. This just barely protrudes, so it 
It's actually a two-level arrangement here. You have the glass protruding very slightly from the back of the phone, and then the lenses protrude very slightly from the glass. But overall, this is done quite nicely. We have the stainless steel here around the different camera lenses, and this matches the stainless steel on the sides. And then I like the way the glossy glass here sets the entire camera square off. I think overall this draws attention to the camera on the back of the phone, and it should because this is I guess the best camera that iPhone has ever had. I haven't got a chance to try it out yet, but you've got three separate cameras on here. You've got a wide angle, you've got an ultra wide angle, and you've got a telephoto. So you should have a much wider range of camera functionality with this phone. In addition, you also have an excellent night mode. I've heard really good things about the night mode, so that is exciting. Overall, this phone just has an extremely nice look and feel. The iPhone 11 Pro is unquestionably a premium phone. You've got a premium look and feel, you've got premium features, and you have a premium price. So this is going to set you back at least $300 more than the iPhone 11. And it really depends from person to person whether that price differential is justified. So you may be able to justify this if you are really into photography. This does have a superior camera array and you're going to be able to enjoy photography more with your iPhone 11 Pro. And also if you are really into screen quality, then perhaps the OLED screen of your iPhone 11 Pro is going to be worth the extra money that you're going to pay for it as opposed to the lower end screen that you have with the iPhone 11. The answers to these questions, of course, are going to vary from person to person. Both phones are great, just depends upon what is going to be best for you. Many thanks for taking the time to watch this unboxing video. If you end up getting an iPhone 11 Pro or iPhone 11, you're probably going to need a case, a screen protector, or other accessories for your new iPhone. And that happens to be the main focus of this channel, The Tech Reviewer. So please subscribe if you haven't done so already so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.